Hi everybody, welcome back for another conversation uh, based on the concepts in Barking Up the Right Tree, Ian's new book. Uh, today, I want to ask you um, a follow-up to our last question, which was... <laughs> I didn't answer it correctly. Well, no, you answered it very well, but I had a whole other area that I thought you were going to go oh, into. Good. So now I'm going to explicitly ask you about that area. Yeah. Um, so in our last conversation, I was asking you about how do you put yourself into the mind of a dog? And we talked a lot about kind of uh, play acting and, you mm -hmm. know, just imagining thought experiments. But I think one of the biggest things that people don't appreciate about being a dog, and you touched on it a little bit, is the importance of scent. So could you explain to our audience how does scent play a role in the world of dogs and how has that informed your dog training? Oh, it's huge. Well, how has it changed dog training? It's one of the biggest life rewards I use. Mm -hmm. I mean, go play. Of it. Look, go well, play. first, how? what is the importance of scent to, oh, to it's, dogs? It's everything to dogs. I mean, it's um, their, their scent is oh, it's uh, unbelievable. It's unbelievable. Mm -hmm. I once had the opportunity to hide um, scent for a friend of mine, a Julie Case, mm -hmm. who I consider the best trainer I've ever, ever seen, ever. Mm -hmm. And she's doing some drug work. And so I took a little bit of some explosive. Okay. Oh, it was teeny. Little teeny bit of explosive, and we're as one does. in a car impound lot. Oh. And 2,000 cars there. So I go out of sight and I hid this. Mm -hmm. I opened it up a Mercedes and put it in under the the um, carpet in the passenger seat, shut mm -hmm. the door, and then she comes looking. <laughs> the dog is searching methodologically mm -hmm. on it on its own, as well as she occasionally says no up here, and its nose is um, you know just twitching. He's not panting like the maniacal dog, so it only gives you like half an hour of search. It's like he's wandering around looking for his car, this is what he's like. Yeah. He walks by the side of this Mercedes and goes, and sniffs the bottom of the door and sits. I I didn't believe it. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's unbelievable. So the dog, we are so visual, yeah. you know, and um, the dog sees everything in this technical air. We're like Maura Blum, black and white and out of focus. It's As smell the everything dogs, it's in technical. Sparkly. Yeah, it's everything. Yeah. And the phrase that changed it for me, um, because I did research on olfaction. That's my first research studies were on olfactory preferences, mm -hmm. um, largely social ones, but then other stuff as well. I wanted to know. This was actually back in the 70s, and one thing we wanted to know was how many bags of plastic bags did you have to put marijuana in so a dog couldn't... Mm -hmm. 27. Mm -hmm. we found, you know, so we thought, well, forget it. Who can afford 27 plastic bags? Um, Drug dealers can. <laughs> yeah, you're right. And so um, I'm doing this research, and it's numbers, and it's obvious that dogs love estrus urine. Mm -hmm. But I had now numbers to prove it. Yeah. Um, and significant values of 0. 0.0001, you know, science. And and my grandfather said, could have told you that 50 years ago, boy, you know. And I said, yeah, but proving it is another matter, and yeah. to what extent. Yeah. But then I read this line in Sirius, a book by Olaf Stapledon, okay. a science fiction book about a dog with the brain of a human but senses of a dog. And so Sirius runs off one night and his owner gets really upset because he's gone and he comes back and he's bedraggled like five days later and he explains it to her. And he could type with holding a thing in his mouth, you know, yeah. and he wrote the book and it's a wonderful book. It changed my whole approach on, on research and training. And he said, I just can't explain to you what her scent means. Mm -hmm. He says, you humans are so dull. You know, and then he explained what the scent of this bitch meant to him. Mm -hmm. it, it meant everything. He said, it's the music of all the music you've ever invented. It's every artwork ever painted. It's, well, and it's the dew on the early morning grass. And yeah. I thought, I think I've been missing something in my research here. Yeah. <laughs> you know, smell is 
everything. And so if you have a beagle out there, folks, I feel like, um, <laughs> sorry, what's that Christmas movie that, with the rocker? Oh, um, Love Actually. Love Actually. I mm -hmm. suddenly had gone into So if you ever have a beagle out there, kids, uh -huh. if you aren't using Go Sniff as your reward, you won't get anywhere. Yeah. So this is what, when we when I asked you about putting yourself in the mind of a dog, I was sure you were going to talk about um, Sirius by Olaf Stapledon. Yeah. And the smell and how, right, when you think about how their senses are different, that makes you realize of the entire way they experience they the world. They live in a different world. Right. And that yeah. if you're not acknowledging smell and what it means to your dog, then you're kind of not really putting yourself in the mind of the dog. Yeah. Um, so... Knowing that smell is so important, how does that influence you? I think you just mentioned it a little bit, but how does that influence your training? What is well? Um, what do people need to do with for that? For me, it's a regular, it's a number two reward. I mean, mm -hmm. we've faced out food lures, and we barely use any food rewards. I only give them to guests to give to the dog, so the yeah. dog likes them. So now my number one rewards, one, two, three, are let's go. Mm -hmm. So I stop every 25 yards on a walk and I say, let's go, which means continue exploring. Right. Exploration. Yeah. And we stop and sit, or rather the dog sits, go sniff. Mm -hmm. It's like, I mean, it's the only way to deal with it. Yeah. And I know, oh God, it's so funny, I've I taken care of a dog over the past week and he sniffed and peed at the same spot that every one of our dogs did on the block, the favorite sniff spot. Yeah. And it's not on a corner. I don't know what it is. It's a little patch of grass. Yeah. And not at the, you know, as turn or anything. Yeah. And they love it. So he naturally stopped and sniffed there. Mm -hmm. So on every walk each day now, I said, sit beforehand and then bow me. Go sniff. Yeah. And so go sniff is a biggie and then go play, obviously. Yeah. But that's only for times when we're at a park or, you know, dogs are off leash in a safe area. Yeah. But that's that's worth a million food yeah. rewards. Just one, rover sit, go sniff. Yeah. And like Claude, remember when Claude was really close to dying and kept kept kidding us he's going to be dead tomorrow but kept living on for a couple of years and I took him on an adventure and we parked at the top of um, the hill and I thought I'm not going to walk today I'm going to let Claude lead after an hour we hadn't made it to the trailhead we were barely 10 yards from the car yeah and we'd normally walk straight over that to the trailhead and yeah. then periodically I'd stop and let him sniff he just wanted to go somewhere new and then think of all the dogs he was smelling there, all the paw prints, yeah. you know, because it, it were in the car park. It makes me think of how I think a lot of uh, parents use um, screen time, whether that's uh, video games or um, watching TV shows and movies as rewards, <laughs> you know, to motivate their children or reinforce the behaviors they want. Do you think it's a fair analogy that, you know, watching a movie, you know, watching your favorite movie is kind of like sniffing your favorite smell or... For kids, yeah, and I actually find that very sad these days that the the rewards have be, all become electronic. And, well, I don't um, think they've all become electronic, but I think that there are some. And I think the big thing that makes it the case is that a lot of parents, and this is definitely not true for all parents, but a lot of parents are very conscious of restricting their kids' access to screens. I think that's good. You know? No, I think that's good. I, I, I would just say, well, you know what I said to do, there's... Um, no BCPCs. I wouldn't allow the brightly colored plastic. Crap. In, we can say crap in, on TV. Oh, we can. And we in, definitely say it on the, the house. Internet. And if you want toys. Um, who, who are you saying this to? To you. What? <laughs> Our house is full of BCPCs. <laughs> it is now. It, it always but, was. But that's because you developed the way you did. Uh -huh. And instead we played games, chess, until you started beating me and checkers, and cards, backgammon, you were very fascinated by that. Um, didn't play too many board games, though you play them now with your kids. And I was just very happy that we would talk a lot, mm -hmm. and that the biggest reward was a big hug. I was very happy with that, because when you were very young, you were attached to me most of the time. I had a papoose in the front, 
because I wanted to talk to you. Mm -hmm. um, we'd play darts together. Yeah. And um, so, yeah, I, I think it's it's probably on par. I could equate a dog sniffing to a child with on their iPhone. Yes. For them, it's the greatest joy in the world. But also, for a dog, I would equate playing tug, tag, or fetch with me, hide and seek, up above that level. Mm -hmm. But there, of course, time, reward you can't do all the time. Right. And every dog and child is different in terms of the things, you know, like one dog, some dogs might love sniffing. That might be their favorite. And, you know, tug might be a little bit below that. You know? All dogs love sniffing yeah. um, but some dogs can develop a maniacal um, like uh, love for fetch tug right um, and I and I really like tug especially because it's easier and safer to use it yeah. means nothing to other dogs but you can have it in your pocket and whip it out yeah and uh, come sit yeah all right well I just <laughs> wanted to touch a little bit on this topic of scent as being an important part of uh, of getting into the mind of a dog which I think is is one of the things that you've really brought to dog training, and I think that dog training is much better for, is this idea that if you want to train a dog, you really have to take the time to think like a dog. And uh, and how, how do you do that? So. And then, obviously, playing sniff games. Mm -hmm. So, like, I love it. Uh, give them a toy, wait until they really get in it. And then I say, you stay down. And I leave the room and hide it somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> and say, find your toy. Yeah. And of course they love it too. And in fact, I think they like the looking for the toy more yeah. than the actual chewing on the toy or, you know, having fun with it. Yeah. And then I like scent treats, uh, hidden, like one of my favorite stories is uh, Phoenix's treat tree. Mm -hmm. um, when I went out before a walk down to the park and hid treats in a, this tree. Yeah. And so we walked down, and I'd wash my hands, and no food on me, and she'd sniff me. And I get to the treat tree, and I say, Feeny, come here, sit. And she does a really nice come and sit. I said, what a good dog. Oh, I, and she's looking at me, wow, the treat tree, it's fruited, look. And I had about six treats there. Yeah. And every time I walked her along that walk, it's the high walk in the park, she would stop under that tree and <laughs> had to explain to her it's the wrong season. Uh -huh. you know? It's very but, short feeding oh, season. Scent games are wonderful. You yeah. know, uh, get into scent work with your dog, nose work. Yeah. Um, they love it and it has so many benefits. It calms dogs. Right. I've seen a lot of reactive dogs because owners want to do things with them that are individual activities. Yeah. So often they take up scent work and after about a year, because they take classes forever, yeah. you can't, once they start class, you can't get them out of class, you know? And um, I noticed tremendous calming in these dogs. And whereas they used to wait till all the other dogs were put away and they'd pull their dog out and run to the arena and do their scent work, where the dog could relax, I noticed now the dogs are out of the cars more. Now, all oh, two of them are sniffing each other. Yeah. Because it's taken the owner's mind off it, everything's calmed down, and the dog's here to use his nose around other dogs. Yeah. So we've naturally, classically conditioned the meeting of people and dogs. Also, so, I think, you know, what you're saying about, like, the rich sensory experience, I think it, it, it really tires the dog out mentally. Like, it burns a lot of mental energy to do scent work or to sniff. Like you were saying yeah. with Claude that one time where you took him out for a walk, you walked two yards over the course of several hours, yeah, and then yeah. afterwards, he fell asleep. Like, the smelling is, yeah. is more exhausting than, say, walking or running. The other thing I did, and the thing I wanted to do, was uh, with the auto shaper, so this is basically a computer that trains the dog for you, but only <laughs> delivering food treats. There's no shock, like in the laboratories. And auto shaping, uh, the first thing was um, no barking. So it auto shaped silence. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> it acknowledged barking. And this is the emotional point about the machine. So if the dog barked, the machine would go, uh oh. Yeah. So it acknowledged the dog's bark, but didn't do anything nasty. But my co inventor, who was a developmental psychologist at Children, mm -hmm. he said, you know, the dogs are bonding to this machine, which is altogether sad, 
that these left a home, home alone dogs are now getting comfort out of a machine that only communicates with beeps and the occasional uh-oh. And I said, I agree with you. I think the machine, when the dog barks or tilts the machine, nose prods it, says, uh-oh, which means to the dog, <clears throat> I know, I'm here, don't worry. I heard you. I felt you. Isn't that sad? I mean, I truly believe that. I tr that's but funny. I believe that it's happy that it's maybe not ideal that the dog is spending so much time in this deprived environment, but the fact that now it's getting a slightly better you oh, know, yeah. experience. No, no, no. Yeah. I think it's sad that it has to get its comfort yeah. out of the machine. Yeah, no, that, that is kind of sad. But of course, the machine is great comfort when people yeah. are gone. So were you going to do a scent <clears throat> auto trainer? Is that where Well, you're... what? no, a whole... Um, odorama for dogs uh -huh. because when we were doing the scent thing the scent had to be remote from the machine because the machine also delivers the food yeah. so we have the scent the dog detector over there so when the dog is sitting in front of where the scent is um then it sends the message you know to let the dog know with beeps yeah so it's kind of like you know hotter and colder because beep beep Beep, 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 beep. Now it means you found the scent. So I thought, what a great destination resort for dogs, an olfactorium, that they can choose urban stroll <laughs> or rural walk. Yeah. And so in rural, you've got right. horse feces, you know. Alpine meadow. Alpine meadow, flat, yeah. Uh -huh. and then, Barnyard scents. But the urban would be like McDonald's wrappers. Yeah. Rat boot poop cat poop yeah. you know and and then as they walk down this maze the odors are puffed out actually i'd have them come out of the ground you yeah know? so they would emanate and i thought you know people would probably pay uh, 20 bucks to have their dog walk uh, go for a half an hour rural well, walk especially if the dog on its was... own at its own time yeah and then we could safely have estrus dalmatian uh -huh. or occasionally estrus cocker, your uh -huh. choice. For the premium platinum package, you get a little <laughs> amniotic fluid. Oh, 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 oh wow, that's, don't. That's Going big. back to puppyhood. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, yes. <laughs> thank you, Dad, for this discussion about scent in uh, in the world of dogs and we how better, you can we use better it for dog stop training. Now. Yeah. I, I hope your, uh, your olfactorium comes to be someday. But uh, thanks, everybody, for listening, and we will see you next time. Thanks for watching this video. If you'd like to learn more about dog training and behavior, make sure you visit DunbarAcademy.com to check out our selection of courses, many of which are completely free. If you'd rather watch more of our videos here on YouTube, just click the links to the right. And if you want to follow us on social media, everything you need is directly below. As always, please make sure to like, comment, subscribe, and don't forget to click the bell for notifications.